it like it literally felt like I was dying. I was like, this could be the last time I see my parents. I don't want to go. I, want, I don't want to die in an ambulance, sort of thing. Mm. So, um, yeah, they came and picked me up and rushed me to the hospital, and it was just like, I just remember being at like one of the scariest moments of my life. Like I had no idea what was going on. I didn't know if I was having a heart attack or I had no idea what was going on. Mm. And get to the hospital and explain to them what was going on and and the guy was like, uh, yeah, we think you're having an anxiety attack. And I was like, what? No. <laughs> no way. Like, I, that doesn't happen to me sort of thing, <laughs> you know. Hey everybody, welcome to the Stillness Podcast. Our goal with this podcast and the Pottery Studio is to introduce you to ways that you can find stillness in your life. Our guest today is going to take us through his journey and experience working at jobs that didn't fulfill him, how this took a toll on his mental health, and a bunch of tools that he's used to combat anxiety. I'd like to now welcome Trevor Blackstock. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. So, you, I'd like, I probably want to get to where you're at now, but let's let's start back when you were working at um, that job you were talking about in Sydney where you um, didn't feel fulfilled in your work. Yeah. Um, basically, like, it, it, it's, I've never really felt like I've fitted in, in any jobs that I've, that I've done, really, like the classic nine-to-five sort of thing. It's, it's never been... It's never been right for me. I've never really found my groove in any of them. Mm-hmm. Um, that one in particular was uh, quite a tough one because I'd actually just come I actually there's one job that I've one nine to five job that I've ever that is the only one that I've ever really loved yeah and um it was a contract role that I did for a company where like it was just such a cool job I used to get flown over to like Vanuatu and all sorts of cool stuff and Mm. just spend time on on boats which was something that I really enjoyed doing um and by the end of the contract that it was supposed to um get extended and and uh they actually um, they couldn't afford to to keep me on, so I got made redundant from that, and actually really took a, a heavy mental, a heavy toll on my mental health. That one, like, mm. it was kind of like a breakup, like a real, real serious breakup. Because you're really yeah. into boats, are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love my boats and and just being on the water in general, sort of thing. So, um, do you yeah. sail? Uh, no, I've never, I've actually never sailed. Never sailed. It's just yeah, mostly. Mostly like power boats and that sort of stuff. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, so so yeah. what what sort of jobs? Um, let's just quickly go through all the ones which you didn't feel fulfilled in. I mean, yeah, I'm sure. There's a few you don't need to mention. Oh, them. there's heaps. But yeah, there's, like I started as as a graphic designer, which I always thought I'd love because I'm because I'm quite a creative type of person, and um, I studied graphic design for like three years, and then worked as a designer for for one year, and just realised it wasn't for me. Like mm-hmm. The, I always had to do work that the clients like it was basically just mind numbing sort of work um, so I got out of that and then I uh, went into another job um, at a at a sort of fishing company mm-hmm. and it just you know like it just had people constantly looking over my shoulders and, and all that sort of thing and just like micromanaging me and, and I'm not great with that sort of thing um, mm-hmm. Uh, so there's those and then I don't know there's a whole host of other little jobs here and there like even from before that like when I moved over here from South Africa um, I worked at McDonald's and just couldn't like <laughs> it, was, it was like the work, I, I think I lasted like three months there I was like nah this is I just couldn't do it just having someone like looking over me and take it feels like my freedom gets taken away and I'm not great with that mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, going like back to the, the, um, job that I really enjoyed, got made redundant from there. And I actually like, it really affected me. Um, like I said, it was kind of like a, um, like a serious breakup. Mm. Um, and then from there I went into, like, I couldn't find another job in Sydney, which was quite stressful because obviously the prices of Sydney are quite high. And, um, I ended up finding a job at an ad agency um and i was working for a company that 
had just gone through a pretty big, um, like a pretty big bad publicity thing. They were fudging numbers of their cars and all sorts of stuff. And yeah, right. um, I, my role was kind of to um, to get in there and kind of direct the conversation away from all of the lies that this company had. Um, yeah, right. That this company had had said. And it just really didn't align with my values, but I hadn't, no, I had no option. Like I was just, like, if I didn't, if I wasn't working there, like I had struggled so hard to find a job before that. And if I wasn't working there, I was, wasn't earning anything and yeah. I couldn't afford to live anymore. So, so what sort of, this, were you lying to customers or what would you actually? Not so much lying, but um, just like not admitting what, what was just, kind of covering the truth up a little bit yeah um yeah it 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 just like it should have been a case where it's like, where it was like yeah we did this we're sorry like mm. blah, blah 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 and it wasn't really like that and it just didn't align with with my values mm. and after a while it took a toll on on my mental health again and um i ended up quitting quitting there and then just going in the spiral of not being able to find like good work or work that I actually enjoyed. Um, and yeah, that's kind of sounds like you must have signed an NDA or something cause you can't talk too much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I can't talk too much about it. Yeah. yeah. So you left um, that job and then you went, Moved to Sunshine Coast, or uh, I left that job, and I did a whole host of other small jobs here and there in, in Sydney, and um, I just like just couldn't find anything that mm. that I was happy where I was happy. So I don't know if it was just the mental space that I was in. I don't know if it was like the fact that I had come f- from a job that I finally mm. um, found that I really enjoyed, and and then I got made redundant from that, and so I was comparing every other job to that. And just nothing could could compare. So, um, yeah. So so then, if I hung around in Sydney for another maybe year or two, and and then ended up moving uh, back up to the Sunshine Coast because my parents and my, uh, my well, the rest of my family's up here. So mm-hmm. yeah, ended up moving back up here. So you moved to Sunshine Coast with your parents, and well, yeah, I moved I moved back to the Sunshine Coast and uh, stayed with my parents for a bit, mm. and then. Um, that was a struggle, like got moving back in with parents um, and then ended up... How like, old were you at the time? Um, would have been 30-something, yep. just over 30, yeah. Yep. Um, so, yeah, moving back in with parents at that sort of age was an interesting, interesting experience. But, um, yeah, I mean, I'm super grateful for them for, mm. you know, giving me the giving me a place to stay while I was looking for another place. But, yeah. Um, and then from there, I, I, um, basically, uh, well, we talked earlier about me enjoy, enjoying boats. Um, I was looking for something that could, um, that I could do that was around boats and that sort of thing. And I ended up finding this, this company that made these really cool little boats and I ended up getting, um, taking a pretty big loan and importing these boats um, with the plan to sell them here. And that absolutely went south and just like I ended up with so much debt from it with and uh, and about 10 boats that I couldn't sell because mm. the market just wasn't ready for those those boats here. Um, what sort of boats are they? They, they were called, they, they kind of like, they call them micro skiff, which is like a small like power boat sort of thing um it's like a a very like shallow running boat mm. um specifically set up for like fishing and that sort of stuff oh yeah um like in the estuaries and that um you but, sold them in the end uh, and yeah ended up selling them in the end but it took me a long time to <laughs> to get there like it was a it was an absolute mission to sell them there were so many hoops that i had to jump through and you know, there were so many issues that that I had to overcome to be able to sell all of them. But, mm. yeah, that was an extremely stressful time. 
in my life. Like I think I was the investment that I'd put into it was like eighty plus K or something. And yeah, it was it was really hard to to make that back, to pay that back sort of thing. So yeah. What lessons did you draw from that? Uh resilience definitely. Um, a lot of resilience from that but yeah also I probably didn't do enough like from a business point of view I didn't do enough due diligence with yeah. that I, I just saw like like something that I was going to enjoy doing I was like oh these boats are so cool I'm going to like it's going to be so much fun selling these things and mm. and I just jumped into it which it was great on one end because I learned so much and I wouldn't ever take it back but I probably should have done a little bit more research into it and a little bit more planning. So how um, long all up did it take you to sell them? Uh, I think three years. Three years, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. So I've still got one of them left, which is, yeah, which is mine. Yeah, cool. Um, but, yeah. So then what did you do from there? You didn't want to buy more boats to sell them again? Definitely didn't buy more boats. No, that was that was actually um, quite a, um, yeah, It that those boats led, me to getting like i mean i kind of struggled with um obviously with like my mental health going like going from all those different jobs and everything into going to this into like having like being in so much debt like everything i was just really starting to struggle and yeah it actually led to um it led to me having to go to hospital at one point what was Um, that for um, I, it, it was a, a, a really bad anxiety attack and I thought I was dying. I was like this, like, so basically like weeks leading up to this anxiety attack, I, um, I just started not, I just started feeling weird. Um, and I would go and sit at this coffee shop around the corner from, from where I used to live. And, um, I would work there like every day didn't really have many friends on the sunshine coast it was just like basically me and uh going and sitting in this coffee shop because i'd kind of made friends with the guys at the coffee shop and um i would sit there for like half the day and just kind of work from there and at that stage i was drinking like three coffees a day just because i felt like i needed to order coffees because i was sitting at their coffee shop sort of thing and um probably wasn't great for me and weeks leading up to this anxiety attack I um I think like I I got it in my head that I had like a pain in my back or something like that or and then I had like started <laughs> googling this pain and it's like oh yeah like that these are symptoms of like a heart attack or something like that and it's all like a stroke or something I can't remember what it was but anyway it's like so this was like playing in my head the whole time and I got all all this the money issues playing in my head at the same time and just I remember one day just waking up and I was like not in a good way went to the coffee shop and I had like three coffees in like before 11 a.m. or something like that <laughs> and it was my like worst idea ever and I just started like my heart started palpitating and I had to go home and um I'd just learned about breath work and went home and did a round of breath work um and it kind of got better and i was like oh yeah sweet this is good i've been able to figure it out and then later that afternoon it came back again and um so i tried breath work again and just didn't work out and ended up having to like call my parents and be like i think i'm having a heart attack or um or a stroke or something like that Mm. and my mum was like oh do you want us to call you an ambulance and I was like no I want you guys to come and pick me up um in my head it it, like it literally felt like I was dying I was like this could be the last time I see my parents I don't want to go I don't want to die in an ambulance sort of thing Mm. so um yeah they came and picked me up and rushed me to the hospital and it was just like I just remember being at like one of the scariest moments of my life. Like I had no idea what was going on. I didn't know if I was having a heart attack or I had no idea what was going on. Mm. And get to the hospital and explain to them what was going on. And and the guy was like, oh, yeah, we think you're having an anxiety attack. And I was like, what? 
no, no way. Like, I, that doesn't happen to me, sort of thing, <laughs> you know. Like, um, like it, it's so weird because leading up to that, I didn't realize that all of the things that, that I was feeling, like when I'd lost my job and all, all mm. of those sorts of things, like I didn't realize that that was anxiety. Mm or that at least like mild anxiety or something like that. So um, it's, it's just it's just not talked about. Like see, when this st- stuff happens to you, you're just you're like, you're like, what the hell is going on? I don't like, it's so weird. Hmm. Yeah. So just all built up over time. Just all exploded. built up. Yeah, just, just all built up over time. And I wasn't talking to anyone about all of the, the struggles that I was going through. Like I wasn't talking to anyone about... Um, the business side of stuff, um, and like as as an entrepreneur, it, it, it's like I mean, I'm sure you, you know you run a few businesses and that, but um, you need to be able to talk to people about business and yeah, definitely, um, and all of that. And I just wasn't doing it. I was just like in this mindset of I can do everything myself, sort of thing. Mm. Totally incorrect. Um, yeah, <laughs> totally. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, it's, it's good. I mean, you would have learned. So you coming out of that, um, obviously, you'd probably still have it, like mild dose. I mean, taste of anxiety. Yeah, yeah. So how do you deal with it now? Um, I, a, a lot of tools. So um, one of them is it's like not one specific thing. It just depends on how I'm feeling and how bad it is and that sort of stuff. But um, breath work has definitely been like a really good, really good thing for me. It what's, just, what sort of breath work? Um, it started off with Wim, Wim Hof breath work. Um, like probably most people would have started out. Um, if, well, most people that get into breath work. Yeah. Um, and then now I don't even know what I like. I've do about created ten, your own. Yeah, no. yeah. It's almost no, well, no. It's all. It's almost like a. Um, I've tried about ten different types of breath work and. Mm. I, it's just like it, I love it now. It's, it's it's one of the greatest things I've ever like discovered in life. Um, it just really allows you to drop into your body and like and find like and just get still, you know, like where nothing. You, you, yeah, you, I don't I don't know how to explain it. It's just like um, it is sort of hard to explain. You've yeah. got to almost experience it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's, that's one of one of them, and then. Um, I don't know. I think one of the other things that was a catalyst to all the anxiety and stuff that I was going through was um, definitely partying too much. Like when I was in Sydney, mm-hmm. that was the that was the um, just the culture there. It's just like, or at least where I was, like in the ag- advertising agencies and that man, that like it's such a culture of just partying and like you know drugs and all that sort of stuff and mm. um. Yeah, I was just going to too much, like yeah. every week, sort of thing, um, and that definitely took took a toll. I suppose when you moved back to the Sunshine Coast, coming off that lifestyle, or you didn't come off. Um, I well, moving back to the Sunshine Coast, I I probably like I did like I, I wasn't definitely wasn't partying as much, but I was still partying a fair bit. Yeah, okay, um, and then yeah. It, it's so basically the the weekend before I uh, yeah the weekend before I went I think I went to a hospital on like a Tuesday and I think that weekend I had had a big weekend yeah right and so that was like definitely the real catalyst to to me having such a bad anxiety attack where I needed to go to hospital yeah sort of thing um yeah I'd, what's your stance on most of that now um. Definitely, if you have any sort of um, anxiety or anything like that, you should not be partying. Mm. Um, I look. I don't mind blowing steam off every now and then, mm. um, but I, I definitely don't do it as much as I used to. Like I'll have a, a little like casual drinks or something like that with friends every now and then. Um, but yeah. Uh, if if you're struggling with it with any sort of anxiety or depression, like it's probably the first thing to cut out. Yeah, 
if if you are into partying and that sort of thing, like, it's probably like the first thing to cut out. I would say. Mm. I would agree. Yeah. So what are you doing now? Um, with your business. So business wise, now I've, I'm doing a few different things. So um, I got contacted by a company in Germany, like they sell a little product and um, that's doing really well in Ger- Germany. And so now they've asked me if I'd be interested in distributing it here. So I'm kind of starting that up at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, I what, do a bit of... What's that look like? What is it? Uh, it's it's a product called a rest tube, which is basically like a... Um, it's like a little life-saving device. So you strap it around your, your waist and um, it's for anyone who, like anyone around the water basically. So um, it's kind of sits it kind of sits in a little pouch and you pull a a trigger if you need to and once you pull the trigger it inflates into like a big into like a buoyancy device that um so let's say you're an open water swimmer and you're swimming out in the ocean and you get a really bad cramp and uh you're in a bit of trouble you'd be wearing that around your waist and pull it and it would inflate and allow you to just like hang on to it and that sort of thing or same with like free divers and that like or snorkelers like the beauty of it is it allows you to like kind of dive under the water mm. still like you've still got a lot of range of motion and freedom of, of movement and that sort of stuff so yeah cool yeah so so that's an interesting little product uh project that i'm busy working on at the moment seems a bit more yeah. aligned with yeah. your beliefs yeah 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 a bit more like it's actually helping people and it's actually saved like many lives around the world so far and that sort of thing so it's definitely a lot more aligned with yeah, yeah, with me and my values and that sort of stuff. So yeah, cool. Yeah, what else are you doing? Um, I do a bit of videography and photography as well because I enjoy that. Yeah, cool. Um, so like at, at the moment, like I just try and do work that I really enjoy doing. Doesn't matter how much, like if it's not making me much money or anything like that. It's just as long as I'm enjoy do, enjoying doing it, like. When I was in Sydney working for an ad agency, like I was making more money than I probably should have been making at, at that time yeah. um, for my experience and all that sort of stuff and it didn't matter. Like I wasn't happy. Yeah. It like money is, is not I mean, money's great to an extent, but <laughs> it's not gonna make you happy. It's not gonna like it's not gonna fix problems if you if you've yeah. got bigger problems in your life and that sort of thing. Mm, definitely. I'm seeing a bit, I mean, I, you can touch on it, but I'm seeing a few patterns of you obviously were into boats mm. and you get stuck in a kind of rut partying, but you're also doing jobs you don't like. And mm. now that you've kind of pushed that away, almost get dealt with a few um, mm. mental health issues. Mm. Now you're starting to almost attract what you want and you're like doing like this. How did they approach you? The guys from Germany. Um, Cause it seems kind they, of. I think it was on like LinkedIn or something. They just um, they. What I'd done is I changed my profile to just be aligned with everything that I enjoy doing. Yeah, cool. Um, and yeah, and it just just kind of attracted them. I guess they just reached out to me and said, "Hey, we we've tried a few other distributors here and." Um, they haven't quite worked out and you seem like you're going to be the right guy. And I was like, mm. Fuck, I don't really have the, I'm like, I'm not a big distributor or anything. I don't know if I have the experience for this. And yeah, they were like, no, that's cool. We, you think, we think we're like your values and everything align with, with our company and hmm. um, we'll help you along the way. Just putting yourself um, out there. Yeah. Just putting myself out there and just, you know, yeah, well, it's exactly that. Yeah. Putting myself out there and I guess putting that energy out there to, yeah and hopefully like it'll attract the things that you want yeah. to attract into your life sort of thing. that's exactly what i'm thinking and i think yeah. a lot of people are would be in your position your sydney mm. position mm. um i've definitely heard of a few people who've done that and then say you know yeah i've got a mate who lives in bali and he was in sydney earning i don't know two fifty thousand a year mm. not happy yeah he's in bali not probably earning as much money and he's happy yeah um so yeah it's not about money Unless you have a purpose for the money, then what are you doing? Exactly right, yeah. Consuming. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's so many people that you see um, that 
um, have a lot of money and just are not happy. Like you've you've really got to have a something bigger in your life than money. Mm. Um, if you can, if you've got the money, and you can use it for great for good stuff. Then yeah, yeah. for sure. But um, earning money for the sake of earning money and being rich is it's just not. It's just not ever going to make anyone happy, I don't think. Not in the long run, anyway. Mm. So, like, maybe short term. But, yeah, long term it'll get you if you're not if you're not um, doing things that align with yourself and your values and all that sort of stuff. Mm. So what else are you doing to maintain your mental health? Um, I So part of it is... Uh, I started exercising a lot more again, like getting into exercise and that a lot more. I've I found um, uh, climbing, which has been a really good mm-hmm. uh, thing for me. Like the, the climbing community has been absolutely amazing. Um, just, just yeah, just like finding things that um, that you enjoy doing and mm-hmm. and putting effort into doing that. That's that's what I've sort of done. Um, I eat a lot cleaner than I used to. Like when I was in Sydney, I was just like, you know, I'd eat burgers every day and just like, you know, obviously the drinking and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, I've definitely cleaned up my diet and started exercising and all that sort of stuff. And that, that stuff alone has a massive impact on mental health. Um, also like just being able to talk to people. I think that's the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. Like people, there's there's way too much stigma around mental health, especially in men. Um, like you hear it all the time. People are just like, I mean, it's it's coming way more to the forefront now, um, where I think men are starting to get more comfortable talking about stuff. But if you can't talk about like what you're going through, it it makes it so much harder. It's so much more isolating. Yeah. Um, and that was the scariest thing for me when I was going through mental health issues is like um, that isolation. You just get, you, you feel like no one can help you. Yeah. You feel like no one understands. Um, and it's so scary. Like that was such a scary thing. Just feeling like this is, it's it's like, um, it, it felt, for me, it felt like I was going crazy. It felt like there was a lot of like, this whole doom and gloom thing and like it was, it was this it was such a scary feeling um and it wasn't until i realized that it was a normal thing to go through these anxieties and to have anxiety and go through ups and downs and like sometimes you just get really bad downs yeah um and you've just got to understand that it's a part of life if you don't have those downs then you can never really appreciate the ups i think Definitely, um, but yeah, being able to talk talk about it was the was where it really started to get a little bit better for me. Yeah, awesome. Did you um, at the time were you talking to even your parents about it? Uh, I I tried talking to my parents about it, but they didn't really get it. Yeah, they didn't really understand it. So I kind of needed to talk to um, some other people. Um, yeah, it 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 was. I don't know why. Uh, it, I don't know if it was just like my parents or something like that. Well, but. I would probably agree that I just think a lot of parents don't, mm-hmm. but I don't know what, because like you're obviously the third person now who's had this experience and it's not like we, mm. it's not like I approached you and said, oh, I've heard you've had an anxiety attack. Do you want to come talk about it? Like I didn't even know you'd had one. Mm. Um, so it's obviously common. Yeah. But why do you think it is in our kind of generation? Just not talked about enough. Like, mm-hmm. But if they were they experiencing it, do you think? Uh, I've I've spoken to my parents about this, and they like I've like blatantly asked them like, "Have you ever gone through any sort of anxiety or anything like that?" Because um, I, I I guess the reason why I couldn't talk to them, and I and I don't know if this would be for everyone else too, but for me, the reason why I couldn't talk to them was because. Their parents, like they, lo- like they obviously love me mm. so much, and uh, but it was kind of they're too close to it. So all they want to do is they want to fix the problem. 
they don't want to like when you're going through that you just need someone who can listen yeah whereas they don't understand that they just want to they they just worried and they really just want to fix the problem um and they yeah they couldn't they couldn't see that i don't know if there's like there probably needs to be a lot more education around how to um how to deal with someone who's going through anxiety mm-hmm. i think that's probably one of the reasons why that generation doesn't get it because there isn't that education around it um i think um in our generation there's probably yeah there's there's a bit more education around it and mm. we're starting to understand it a bit more and it's coming more to the to the forefront and all that sort of thing. So, Did it exist in their generation is, I suppose, the other question? I don't know. That they would – I've heard them, people like that, um, older people say, like, it's a new thing. My mum says that a lot. Yeah. 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 She, she's always so surprised about how, um, like, how our generation is going through – so much anxiety and depression and all that sort of stuff. Um, and she says they never saw that. Maybe they just, like, they were silent because obviously suicide was existed back then. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you think anxiety would have led there? For me, it's I don't like to think about it, but if it carried on going the way that it was going... Who knows? If you didn't do anything about it and you just if, suppre- if you suppressed it with drugs. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like I think not talking about it. I actually I, I actually have a um uh he wasn't a close friend, but he was a um I'd met him a few times. Um and about three or four weeks ago he actually committed suicide. He hanged himself. Hmm. And um For anyone who knew him, you would never, you would never have known. Like he was, um, he was like the he was just he was just a happy guy. Like none of his it, it shocked everyone. None of his friends knew what was going on, mm-hmm. and yeah, and he ended up taking his life and just never spoke about it. And that's the thing. Like that's why it's so important to talk about it. Because it can go downhill, like really fast if you don't start talking. Did you say you knew him personally? Or? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Can you now kind of think back to the last time you saw him and see any kind of science signals, or not really? Not really. Um, Only because the one of the guys who was on, I'm not sure if he mentioned it, but he did tell me that same thing happened to one of his friends recently. Mm. Mm. Um, but he was, you know, everyone said he was happy, he's happy. But then when he reflected on it, he could see the cries for help. Mm. It was obvious to him afterwards. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I know him through um, through my cousins and um, one of my cousins did say to me, yeah, there were a few things that he that he said that to him that, that were a bit of a, maybe not a cry for help, but he was just, he, I, I guess he was trying to, yeah, maybe it was a cry for help, but he he talked about how he would get on his on his uh, motorbike and like ride around the streets at like 180 k's an hour, weaving through traffic and that sort of thing. And I think, yeah, my cousin and I actually talked about this the other day, and, he, and my cousin was like, yeah, reflecting on that, that was kind of him saying silently, I mean, in a roundabout way, that he was kind of suicidal, I guess, mm. and just. Yeah, it's it's subtle things. It's subtle things like that. I personally, I like. I I've tried to reflect on it, and I I don't remember him mm. saying too much to myself. But yeah, yeah. Mm. Interesting. We've um, have I told you about this? No. So we've brought out a um. Well, we're just about to launch, calling it Stillness Every Day. Mm be launched by the time everyone listens to yours but it's a meditation gratitude journal yep um with the kind of you know hope that people who are in 
dark places can look at the light, set intentions, what they'd be accomplished for, what they're grateful for. Yep. You know, reflections. Yep. Just journaling. And then um, meditations, will you be able to scan to and meditate on the website? Yeah, that's... And also just reflecting on your week and where you've been, so... I love it. I, I love, like. I feel like it really... Um, it's also kind of, again, bringing light to this whole thing again. Mm. Um, How do you think? If you had this in... Oh, I mean, cafe. That, it was kind of... Yeah, it, that was kind of part of my getting better, to be honest. Like... Like journaling. like journaling and and just writing down like starting to set goals for myself and all that sort of stuff again because mm. um, I think I just went by the wayside and I just kind of uh, there was just so much going through my head and I and I just lost myself really mm. um, something like that allows me like would have allowed me to I guess yeah you've got uh, to have a reason mm, to get up I think for sure you've got to have a reason yeah you got to have things you're working towards. Yeah. Even if it's like, even if you don't know what it is yet, because that's another thing. It's uh, like sometimes people just don't know what they want to do and they just like, they'll get stuck in, in ruts mm. just because they don't know what they want to do. Yeah. Um, I think like it can be the tiniest reason and just knowing that, yeah, one day you'll figure it out mm. what you want to do. Just keep trying things and all that sort of stuff. But um, if you, I think it is, it makes it so much harder if you don't, have something to wake up for and that sort of thing. Um, I think, yeah, your kind of story is that, you know, you've got to try a bunch of things. You can't, mm. you know, there's someone, someone said to me the other day, I can't remember who it was right now, but they they wanted to be an architect or something. Mm. Their parents wanted them to be an engineer, so they'd be an engineer. Mm. I don't know who that was. Maybe Gabby said it. Yeah. But it's like, if you want to be an architect, just go be an architect. Yeah. Like, don't be scared. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's so true. I, was, I see so many people do that. Like, um, th- throughout school and that, even for me, I always knew that I wanted to do something creative. And um, so I was a shit student. Like, I was, I didn't finish, didn't end up finishing school. Um, but yeah, everyone would always be like, oh, you know, you should, you should, do this, do that, do this. Like you, you want to um, go and be an engineer or something like that. And it's just like if I, I just knew if I if, if I was ever to do any of that stuff, I just would be miserable. Um, I think it's important to, yeah. You need the self awareness. You need the self awareness. Yeah. I but, think. Yeah. Do you act on intuition? Massively. Yeah. 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 Do you think? you would do you think you almost act on the intuition but then start um sorry do you think you get the intuitive um thought but then you kind of suppress it with what ifs or you don't do that you're more of a um yeah i i'm like i can definitely sometimes be be a massive overthinker so like although i'm quite um like spontaneous and i will act on my like i'm i'm very intuitive as well like it's just one of like the things so like and and i will act on it and um but at the, on the flip side of that i can like i overthink a lot of things way more than i should mm-hmm. um yeah i've life completely forgot what you what well you i suppose like, the boat buying um 10 boats was probably yeah um yeah yeah, yeah. trusting your gut because a lot of people would be scared to take a risk like that yeah like whether it was smart or stupid, it was still it very, was still a yeah still a, lot, a good experience that would have taught you a lot and probably help you with this next business you're on yeah. the way to. Yeah, whereas well, a lot wouldn't take that step; they'd be too scared. Yeah, most yeah, like most people I spoke to when I was doing that was like, "What are you doing? Like, you, that's the dumbest thing you can do." <laughs> um, and I was just like, "No, nah, I'm just like, I'm gonna give it a go because it could lead to something great." could bomb out which it kind of it didn't 100% bomb out like I kind of made my money back but um, it was super stressful but yeah the lessons that I learned from that were just mm. like there's no way that I could have learned those lessons anywhere else mm. so for, from a 
from not only from a business point of view from just a like resilience point of view f- mm. as a as a human being now like I feel like I'm so much stronger for for doing that did you ever do have you ever done free work or kind of volunteered to a place that you wanted to learn from um i ha- i i do a fair bit of um free work for companies that like um that I'm interested in, or something yeah, like yeah. that. So yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I, um, when when you say in this boat thing, I mean I'm thinking of when there's an opportunity and you someone's got something to teach you. Mm. It's almost the same thing. Like you came out level, mm. you did it all yourself the hard way. You could just go. I mean, not saying um, your experience, but someone could just go up to someone, knock on their door. Hey, mate, because I'd like to learn. I work for free, but a lot of people don't want to work for free. Yeah, but it's no. Like you're going to uni and you're paying for it to learn. Mm. Like it's no different. Then you've got to pay that back. Or, yeah, well, I've still got heaps of uni debt to pay exactly back. Exactly, same. <laughs> so like, mine's there's... over 100000 Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> It's crazy, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and you could have just learnt that by exactly what you're saying mm. there, just like going in and going to someone knocking on their door and being like, hey, I'll, I'll work for free and just I just want to learn. Literally. Um, and a lot of learning you can do. I mean, you won't – like, obviously, you're going to be doing the, – the, the other thing that puts people off, I think, is sometimes you will be sweeping floors. Yeah. But then 10 hours out of the 20, you'll be learning stuff and just watching, ob- observing how the yeah. business is run or I don't know what they're running. Mm. I know Lee J, the first podcast we had, he went and volunteered for the screen printing business because he was letting him on the side use the screen printer for his own shirt mm. and he ended up buying the guy's business a few years later. Yeah. So, I mean, you, yeah. you, you don't know that opportunity unless you put yourself out there. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. Like, um, even like in the videography, photography world, I think heaps of people do that. Like, they'll do free work for until they build up a portfolio or just to get that. Mm-hmm. And I think that could be like carried on over to so many different industries and all that sort of thing. I think, like, yeah, the on that, like, I, I just think it would be so good if people realized how uh how much experience and how much you can learn about yourself and that just being able just going out and doing if you love something mm. and you want to like the thing i i hear so much in my in my life is like you, i always land up in jobs that look amazing and everything and um Again, I haven't always loved them, but like some of the jobs, like the the, the one that one in particular um, that uh, that I got let go of, um, like when I got that, people were like, "How do you land up with these sorts of jobs?" And it's it's all through putting yourself in the in that situation. Mm. Like now, where I'm at now, um, I, I I don't feel like I ever work. Like I work a lot, but I never actually feel like I'm working yeah, because I'm good. enjoying what I'm doing now. Yeah. Um, and I, there's no ways I'd be in that position if I didn't mm. um, do exactly what you you were saying sort of thing. Just yeah. put yourself out there. I get the same thing now. And what was I looking? I was looking at this email before. The account, uh, accountants asked me for stuff for my tax last year. And I looked at the date, it was like 13th of September, and I, I unread it and made I'll do it tomorrow. And then I went and I was like, I'll do it now. Went in uh, reading, I was like, fuck, I just can't do it. Like, <laughs> I, read, I just can't do just jobs I don't want to do. Yeah. But then yeah. yesterday at the studio, like I was helping Jai mop and clean the floors and recycle clay, and it's like, mm. yeah, it's mm. not really work. Yeah. So it's like you got to, I don't know, there's got to be a purpose for what you want to do. But back to that... um back to the volunteering i think in art because i studied architecture mm. and I, I remember hearing a lot of because i always had the art mentality like if i was going to work which i was never going to work for mm. an architect but mm. i would go and knock on the best one that i could find and work yeah. for them yeah but apparently there's it's frowned upon in the architecture world they yeah, right. they don't recommend it it's almost like i feel like the, a lot of architects abused the free labor but like mm. Surprised that it's know. frowned upon. Yeah, same. I think it's um, really the best thing you could do. Yeah. Or go and to a yeah. construction site with a white card and just say I want to follow labour and follow yeah. around the supervisor and yeah. learn about building, yeah. which you don't learn at school. 
I just honestly think it's the best. Like I would, if I could have my time again for uni, like I would, I probably wouldn't have gone. I would have just gone and done exactly that, knocked knocked on someone's door and said, like, just tried different things. Mm. Went there for a week. If I didn't like it, then I'll just go. Okay, this isn't right for me. I'm going to go try the next thing. Go try the next thing. Go try the next thing until you find something that's like, oh yeah, this could be, this could be all right. Mm. And then just keep doing that. Or jump on YouTube. Yeah. Probably learn enough on graphic design on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, probably could. All right. Well, thanks, Trevor. It's been good chats. Yeah. No worries, Hopefully thank you. the conversation is going to help someone else. Yeah. Who's yeah. in a similar position or situation. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. But yeah. Just being able to talk about the stuff, I think. Um, I think I think the, the, most thing, the most important thing is just people understand, like knowing that everyone goes through through yeah. that like through struggles and just talk about it to someone yeah yeah how would you final words how would you how would you bring it up to the friend that you want to tell that you're going through this and to break the ice it might be an awkward conversation for someone or you might be a bit it is like there's no easy way i don't i don't think there's an easy way you, you've just got to um sit down with someone that you trust um if 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 you have that person if you if you're lucky enough to have that person in, in your life and just be like hey I, I need to get something off my chest and just chat yeah. um for me like i didn't really talk to anyone that um that i massively trust like i tried i tried with my parents but then um quickly realized i couldn't talk to them about it and i just I just ended up reaching out to Annika, actually. Um, oh, really? Yeah, um, my, my housemate, and um, uh, yeah, I just called her one day and said, "Hey, do you mind if we catch up for a coffee?" And we caught up for a coffee, and I just like had a chat to. Her. We didn't know each other that well, mm. um, Annika and I, um, at the at the time, and just that started started the like process of me getting better so yeah, cool. i think yeah awesome it's the most important thing for me and if you're partying too much and you're going through stuff then stop doing that as well so partying yeah. from the horse's mouth guys if there is i know there's a bunch of people out there like you can always reach out to us you can probably message trevor trevor no doubt um i know the guys yeah. at exalto corrective culture there's um jordan potts uh josh sherwell jake stone callan like they've got the gentleman's club going at the moment as well which yeah, there's heaps of guys out there that you can just have a chat to if you've got no one else. Mm, perfect. Jai Stewart at the Pottery Studio. Yep. Awesome. Thank you. Cool. Thanks. <laughs>